Hello viewers, in today's video in my YouTube channel we will discuss about symptoms of faulty engine control unit, ECU. The ECU receives input from various sensors located throughout the vehicle, such as the oxygen sensor, throttle position sensor, crankshaft position sensor, and many others. It processes this information and makes real-time decisions to optimize engine performance, fuel efficiency, emissions, and other parameters. The ECU uses pre-programmed algorithms and maps to determine the ideal fuel injection timing, spark timing, valve timing, and other factors that influence engine operation. It also communicates with other control modules in the vehicle, such as the transmission control module, anti-lock braking system module, and traction control module, to coordinate their functions. How does an ECU work? An ECU is often referred to as the brain of the engine. It is essentially a computer, a switching system and power management system in a very small case. To perform even on a basic level, it has to incorporate four different areas of operation. 1. Input. This typically includes temperature and pressure sensors, on, off signals and data from other modules within the vehicle and is how an ECU collects the information it needs to make decisions. An example of an input would be a coolant temperature sensor, or an accelerator pedal position sensor. Requests from the anti-lock brake system, ABS, module may also be considered, such as for the application of traction control. 2. Processing. Once the data has been collected by the ECU, the processor must determine output specifications, such as fuel injector pulse width, as directed by the software stored within the unit. The processor not only reads the software to decide the appropriate output, it also records its own information, such as learned mixture adjustments and mileage. 3. Output. The ECU can then perform an action on the engine, allowing the correct amount of power to control actuators precisely. These can include controlling fuel injector pulse width, exact timing of the ignition system, opening of an electronic throttle body or the activation of a radiator cooling fan. 4. Power Management The first stage of ECU operation is power management. This is where various voltages are regulated and the power-up of the ECU is handled. Most ECUs have sophisticated power management due to the variety of components inside, accurately regulating 1.8V, 2.6V, 3.3V, 5V, 30V and up to 250V all from the car's 10 up to 15V supply. Power management also allows the ECU to have full control over when it powers itself down. The ECU has many internal power requirements for the hundreds of internal components to function correctly. In addition to this, in order for many sensors and actuators to work, the correct voltage has to be supplied by the ECU to components around the car. This could be just a steady 5 volts for sensors, or over 200 volts for the fuel injector circuits. Not only does the voltage have to correct, but some outputs have to handle more than 30 amps, which naturally creates a lot of heat. Symptoms of a bad ECU can vary depending on the specific issue, but here are some common signs to look out for. Number 1. Engine performance issues. A failing ECU can cause various engine performance problems, such as rough idling, misfires, hesitation, or a significant drop in power and acceleration. Number 2 Starting Difficulties The ECU plays a crucial role in the starting process. If it fails or malfunctions, it can result in difficulty starting the engine or a complete failure to start. Number 3 Poor Fuel Efficiency A malfunctioning ECU may disrupt the engine's fuel management system, leading to decreased fuel efficiency and increased fuel consumption. Number 4 Illuminated Warning Lights A bad ECU can trigger the illumination of the check engine light. CL, or other warning lights on the dashboard. These lights indicate that the ECU has detected a fault or malfunction in one or more systems. Number 5 Erratic or incorrect sensor readings, the ECU relies on accurate sensor data to make appropriate adjustments. If the ECU is faulty, it may receive incorrect readings from the sensors, causing erratic behavior or incorrect engine control decisions. Number 6 Transmission Issues the ECU is responsible for controlling the transmission's shifting patterns and engagement. 
A malfunctioning ECU can result in transmission problems, such as harsh shifting, slipping, or failure to shift gears. Number 7 Electrical Problems A faulty ECU can cause electrical issues in the vehicle, including intermittent or complete loss of power to various components or systems. There are several types of control modules in a car, each responsible for different functions within the vehicle. Some common types of control modules include, 1. Engine Control Module, ECM The ECM, also known as the Engine Control Unit, ECU, is responsible for controlling the engine's fuel injection, ignition timing, and other essential functions to ensure optimal engine performance and efficiency. If you suspect a problem with the ECU, it is best to have the vehicle inspected and diagnosed by a qualified technician. They can use specialized diagnostic tools to communicate with the ECU, retrieve error codes, and perform further testing to pinpoint the issue. In some cases, the ECU may need to be repaired or replaced. Diagnosing a bad engine control module ECM, can be tricky, as its failure can mimic symptoms of other problems. However, there are some telltale signs that can point you in the right direction. Here are some steps you can take to diagnose a bad ECM. 1. Check for error codes. The ECM stores error codes that can help diagnose problems with the engine and other systems. You can access these codes using an OBD2 scan tool. 2. Look for common symptoms. Several common symptoms can indicate a failing ECM, including engine stalling or sputtering. This can be caused by the ECM not receiving accurate data from the sensors or sending incorrect signals to the engine, difficulty starting the engine. This can happen if the ECM is not able to properly control the ignition system. Rough idling. This can be caused by the ECM not being able to properly control the air-fuel mixture. Reduced fuel efficiency. This can be caused by the ECM not being able to optimize engine performance. Dashboard warning lights. Many warning lights on your dashboard are controlled by the ECM. If you see several lights, come on at once, it could be a sign of a problem with the ECM. 3. Perform a visual inspection. In some cases, you may be able to see signs of damage to the ECM, such as burns or cracks. However, this is not always the case. 4. Test the ECM. If you suspect that the ECM is bad, you can have it tested by a professional mechanic. They will have the tools and expertise to diagnose the problem. Here are some additional tips for diagnosing a bad ECM. Keep a record of your car's maintenance. This can help you identify any patterns or recurring problems. Consult your car's repair manual. This can provide you with specific information about your car's ECM and how to diagnose problems. Talk to a mechanic. If you are not comfortable diagnosing the problem yourself, take your car to a qualified mechanic. It is important to note that diagnosing a bad ECM can be complex and requires specialized tools and knowledge. If you are not comfortable doing it yourself, it is best to take your car to a qualified mechanic. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please like it and leave a comment. If you are new to the channel, please click the subscribe button.